Um, hello, my name is Matthew, and this morning I finished reading Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is uh, the copy that I have. It's a really cool looking cover. And this is a, a beautifully written novel that has a few significant flaws. Um, it begins on the French Riviera in the 1920s, and we meet a whole group of expatriates that very quickly the more we spend time with them and see how they behave and talk um, they seem they seem like the typical bad American tourists they're um, ill-behaved and acting inappropriately and generally unlikable and one of the one of the main flaws that I have with this novel is that Almost all of the characters are so unlikable and unrelatable. But our three principal characters are Dick Diver and his wife, Nicole. The, the story begins from the perspective of a young starlet. Her name is Rosemary. And they're at this hotel in the French Riviera, and she meets some of these expatriates, the bad American tourists, and then she meets Dick Diver. And Dick Diver is uh, Fitzgerald's idea of this ultimate male fantasy. He's cool and collected. Um, everyone likes being around him. The women love him. Uh, Rosemary almost love at first sight. She just sees Dick Diver and even tells her mother, I, I just saw this man and now I love him. And from Rosemary's perspective, we get to see um, the relationship that Dick Diver has with his wife and why they are vacationing, holidaying in the French Riviera, and they spend time together. One of the most, one of the most ridiculous scenes in the novel so we, we have Rosemary, who's just head over heels in love, swooning over uh, this guy, Dick Diver. And one night she has just one glass of champagne and she pulls Dick Diver into her bedroom and she flings herself on the bed and just sort of like exclaims like, take me. Dick Diver is just standing erect and kind of rebuffing her advances and saying like, you're, you're so young. She, I think she's like a teenager. And Dick Diver is like an adult in, in his mid to late thirties. She say, says things like, you know, just, ta just take me. And Dick Diver says, what about my wife, Nicole? And Rosemary says, she'll never know. So there's sort of kind of like ba bad dialogue that you might read in a cheesy, romance or something it's altogether unbelievable or I don't like the idea that it's believable we move on to part two and what we what happens is there's a time shift we go back in time and we start focusing just on uh, Dick Diver and how he meets uh, Nicole his wife and I guess I don't want to spoil too much because a lot of the book hinges on a few key events, but <clears throat> it's an autobiographical novel. And if you know anything about Fitzgerald, and especially Fitzgerald in relation to his wife, Zelda, so many of the things that are in this book um, are just on the nose. The, the parallels are obvious and it's another one of the issues that I have with this book is that it feels middling it's not entirely an autobiographical um, novel the the things that are happening don't feel entirely realistic or believable and yet the creative aspects the creative choices that were made in this book also don't have the imaginary powers that you might expect in a novel and 
it doesn't go one way or the other and so there's aspects to me that felt muddled but as we follow uh, Dick Diver's uh, relationship with um, his soon-to-be wife Nicole and their experiences and his experiences um, after they've been married we, we find that Dick Diver's life is one of tragedy. There's a downward spiral and his life has a series of misfortunes, a lot of which are his own fault. Some are just character traits that he has. Um, he's pretentious and ob obnoxious and unlikable. He sees himself as much better, much more intelligent, more competent, um, more interesting than he really is. And so the, the book starts having this gradual slope where we're following the life of a man um, who's just falling apart. Everything around him um, starts going really badly. And I'll say uh, there's a quote on the back. This is from Ernest Hemingway. And Hemingway and Fitzgerald knew each other. Uh, I don't know a lot about their association, but I do know that they had a falling out. So we have this character, Dick Diver, who, for, for all intents, is, is a, a mask that Fitzgerald is wearing. Dick Diver is Fitzgerald. And as the book goes along, Dick Diver's life gets worse and worse. Just all of these tragedies and misfortunes. Um, <laughs> so Hemingway has a quote. Uh, Tender as the night gets better and better. So I love the idea <laughs> of Hemingway being kind of uh, disgruntled and uh, mad at Fitzgerald for something and then pleasantly reading this book about a character who's obviously Fitzgerald, whose life falls to pieces. Uh, so th th there's, there's not too much... Some of the characters that we meet, I, I have a really hard time connecting to. Uh, Nicole, Rosemary, Dick, and when tense moments happen, when really tragic, sad points occur in these people's lives, um, the feeling that I have isn't so much that, that I don't care about them, but that I've become numb. They, they are, uh, almost all of them and other characters um, were so off-putting to me. So all, all of that being said, the, it's written beautifully, pa page by page, line by line, it's, it's so evident that Fitzgerald is an extraordinary writer. And this is a case of a novel that's extraordinarily written, but the sum of its parts don't hold together. Um, it it could have been editing choices, uh, some stylistic choices, the structure in which the novel is put together is a little unusual. Um, I feel like a lot of parts could have been excised. The main issue though is not having an emotional connection with some of the characters that the whole entire novel hinges upon. Um, I, I thought the ending had um, some really satisfying conclusions. Um, as far as Dick Diver goes, um, you do have a feeling that you want to know more what, what exactly happened. Um, I guess I don't want to go into that too much. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautifully written. And I like, I, I, I like the idea that Fitzgerald is trying to punch above his weight. You really get a sense that he, he wanted to write a great novel. Uh, he wanted to write a great American novel and there's a lot of things in this book where um, he's aiming high uh, the, 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 
the style choices, the language, the really purple lyrical prose, um, and it doesn't hit the mark. It, 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 the, the whole doesn't elevate. Um, but all of that being said, I, I really enjoyed the book. Um, relatively fast paced. Uh, it has that randomness and coincidence in, in the, the events that happen in the book that um, even though some things can be extraordinary, can still feel true to life. Um, I, 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 I guess um, the, f the fact that we have this character that's um, just totally tied up with the author, um, t t to me, maybe that was a shortcoming. I I'm, not, I'm not sure. Um, so I'm not raving, but uh, I really enjoyed um, Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Um, uh, that's it. So leave a comment if you would like. Uh, let me know if you've read it. Let me know what, what you thought of it. Um, and that's it. So thank you for watching.